Hey senpai, it's your co-host Hi, and I'm back with another in-depth review. Today we are very excited because we're going to do yet another Yoshitoku collab video. As you may know, we have a very love-hate relationship with these figures. We love the dolls, but we hate the price. If you watched our video on Pakora, you'll know that we said we will never buy another figure from this line unless it's been on sale or from secondhand discount. As you can see beside me, I have the Albedo Japanese doll, and if you didn't know, she's actually the most expensive Yoshitoku collab with an MSRP of 297,000 yen, which means that we never thought that we would own her. Senpai's been keeping an eye on her though, and he found her on AmiAmi Ami for a 30% discount, which makes her 207,900 yen, with a total discount of 89,100 yen off the MSRP price. Don't get me wrong, she is still very expensive. Even after a 30% discount, she is still the most expensive Yoshitoku collab figure, with Pakora being right behind her at 198,000 yen, but that is at MSRP. It's interesting because the first sale that we saw in Albedo was 30%, whereas every other figure that we've seen from this collaboration has had a first sale of 20% and then 35%. So maybe if she follows the trend, we'll see a 45 or even 50% discount next. There's another interesting layer to this story though. When Pakora went on sale three months after her release, Senpai went to check on Albedo since they released about the same time, but he found out that she was sold out, furthering the narrative that we might never own her. Two weeks later, Senpai went to check again, and he found that she was back in stock and with a 30% discount. The going in and out of stock is interesting because we've seen this with two other dolls, Toru and Cardcaptor Sakura. They had been released long enough to go on sale, sell out, and then somehow magically reappear again for sale months after release. So this means that stock is coming from somewhere. What we speculate is happening is that Furuyu is giving Yoshitoku a specific bulk order, and Yoshitoku is behind on filling them. This is part of the reason why we see these figures delayed months after the first estimated release date. So even after they release, this is why we see them come back in stock months later, even if they sold out. Furuyu likes to flaunt that these figures are made to order, but we know that they gotta be made to bulk order because these are not time-limited pre-orders, and they obviously have enough extra stock that cancel pre-orders can't even account for. So all in all, this would make sense as to why these figures continue to go back in stock even months after they sold out. Hopefully, what this means for you all is that she's not going to sell out anytime soon and will go on her second discount. If she happens to be 45% off, this would make her 163,350 yen. So with that, Let's dive right in. To reiterate, this is the Yoshitoku FNEX Albedo Japanese doll. It is a 1-4 scale with an MSRP of 297,000 yen. An interesting tidbit, the sculptor Moino is the same sculptor for the Kurumi Japanese doll, but is different from the Bakura Japanese doll, which was designed Coco. And with that, let's take a look at this giant box. This box is identical to Kurumi's in every single way, including the terrible packaging. AmiAmi once again decided to only ship this in Yoshitoku's double box with a single layer of bubble wrap. You would think that for a figure that costs 300,000 yen, they might take a little extra care in packaging it, but obviously not because this box is very bent. It should be noted that Pakora was shipped in both Yoshitoku's double box as well as regular AmiAmi packaging. And just like Kurumi's box, this box is just as ugly because Design Coco is no longer involved, and so it's just a plain black box with the name on the front. With that, let's open her up. Here's the first layer of inner packaging.
Initial impressions are, well, I'm a little bit overwhelmed. There's just so much to talk about. Starting off with the unboxing experience, it was just a lot of effort every step of the way. There's a lot of pieces and I missed design Coco already because we're back to Furu and we're seeing all of the same issues with the fitments, the base and the paint as we did with Kurumi. Regarding the fitment, her feet, don't want to fit in the base all the way. And we had to literally twist her leg to get the pegs to line up. Her head takes an enormous amount of effort to be pushed in and there's still a gap that we can't get rid of. Even her arms are very difficult to put in. Focusing on the positives, speaking of a lot, this figure has a ton of presence. She's on a whole nother magnitude than any of the other figures we own, including the other Japanese dolls. It's really hard to capture just how large she is on camera without being right beside her. Dimensions wise, she is 20 and a half inches to the tip of her wing, but 18 inches to the top of her hair. What you can't really see here is that she's 18 inches wide and 15 inches deep. So she is not going to fit into the top. So you're going to have to get very creative with how you display her. After that, there's just so much to talk about. So we're just gonna dive right on in. And to do that, we're going to start off by talking about her kimono and we're going to take off her wings so we can take a closer look. Starting with the kimono, for those of you that don't know, Yoshitoku is responsible for making the kimonos. And as we've seen in several of the Yoshitoku dolls, she is wearing two kimonos. And so we can see the black on top and the white on the bottom. This stems from Kabuki Theater where they would wear two kimonos on stage so they can change from one to the other while they're performing. As far as I can tell, there are four base fabrics here, the white, the black, the pink, purple, and red, which are all the same fabric, just dyed different colors. And of course, the obi, which is going to be the only embroidered piece on this figure, as is typical with all of the Japanese dolls that we own. With the exception of the embroidered obi, all of the design work that you see here is printed. And typically they go back with a gold foil paint and outline certain details such as the flowers. But here on Albedo, we can see that they used a silver paint and only did the spiders and the webs, which leads to an unfortunate problem. In particular, we can see this on the black sleeve where they've chosen to use white spider lilies. And it's really cool actually, because when they're white, they mean happiness and prosperity. But you know, in anime, we usually see them as red. And so it means death. And as cool of a detail as this is, it's unfortunate because the resolution of the image on the black fabric is very low. And so the flowers are really blurry. And I feel like in past Yoshitoku dolls, they've made up for this by using that gold foil paint to outline the flowers. And so they look sharper. And so in contrast to the white sleeve where we have these red flowers outlined in a white color, they just look a lot sharper. So unfortunately you're just left with this blurry image. And it's very reminiscent of the rim Yoshitoku doll which use very little outlining. And we just think that she's the weakest of the line. And so it's just very unfortunate, especially on a 300,000 yen doll. Taking a look at the Obi, I removed her hair so we can take a better look. And this is actually two separate pieces. And I believe they've done this just to make it easier to attach her wings. And so this fancy rose piece you see here is actually a separate piece with a little hairpin piece on the back that you can stick inside of the sash, which is admittedly pretty difficult because the fabric is very tight. But in reality, this would all just be one piece and the Obi would be tied into this fancy bow. So it's pretty cool to see such an intricate design with the rose. And again, this is the only embroider piece on the figure and so they've chosen to embroider flowers throughout it and it's a very pretty piece. And as with the other dolls, we see a real rope obijime. In typical fashion, the kimono is handmade by Yoshitoku and as always, it's flawless. I really can't find any fault with it. No stitch out of place. The fitment is good. It's attached well. It's a beautiful kimono. It's just such a shame that we have a low resolution image on the black fabric because I really like the color palette and it's stunning otherwise. Before moving on to the paint and reattaching her wings, I think this is a good place to talk about her base and her supports. And just like the Kurumi base, we again have the cheap, ugly, plastic, dark brown base that's very thin. In certain lights, you can still see the support structure. And this stand is not any better. Again, it's the same cheap plastic. It scratches very easily. It shows fingerprints. So I'm going to again get on my soapbox. Uh, please give me an acrylic base. It's a 300,000 yen figure. It's not that hard. Or at least give me the Yoshitoku base, which is particle board and looks better. But I'm going to beat the dead horse until Furu listens. 
The only positive things I can say about this base is that they did provide metal pegs for her feet and that these metal supports are integrated into the base. They're not just floating on top like freeing legs to do. I know these supports are going to bother a lot of people. As for me, I'd rather have them than sag any day of the week. And many times museums use them in their displays, and so it doesn't really detract from the quality for me. I will say that they could have sculpted the right wing to where it rests on the base, but if they wanted to keep the movement of the left wing, which I think is really stunning, instead of having two wings on the ground, is with some kind of diorama piece, but I don't really feel like that fits the Japanese doll aesthetic. These wings are ginormous. Each wing weighs about one and a half pounds. For context, this entire figure weighs four and a half pounds, so both wings together contribute to two thirds of this figure's weight. So this one single peg is not going to be able to hold one and a half pounds. So personally, I'm glad they provide supports because I'd rather have wings with supports than no wings at all. Taking a look at the paint, I again miss Design Coco because we just went from the best 1-4 scale paint that we've seen to something that's on par with Freeing. And for a 300,000 yen figure, you're probably going to be disappointed with some of the things you see here because there's really only shading on two elements and that's going to be the wings and the Kamikazari. On the wings, as far as we can tell, they used a pearlescent purplish blue paint and then went back over it with a black airbrush and so you do have these nice shimmery highlights between the feathers on the sides and the tips. As for the Kamikazari, they have done shading on this top flower and on the insides of these side flowers and here on the tassels. And that's where the shading stops. They've gone for the alter technique for her hair where they use this purple translucent plastic and then they've gone back over it with a black airbrush. But that's it, there's no highlights. For her skin, there is no shading. They have painted her fingernails black and it is pretty clean. Her horn is just one solid white glossy color. For her face, her eye decals are set nicely and they did give it some gloss, which I appreciate because it does give them some life. Now when we get to her mouth, it gets a little wonky. The inside of her mouth looks good, but they've only given her lip gloss on her bottom lip. And so her top lip just kind of blends in with her skin. And so it kind of makes her look like she has duck lips. I think it would have looked better if she had red or black lipstick and then it would have been more reminiscent of Kabuki theater. I don't know who's responsible for the fan, but it looks pretty good. So I'm gonna assume that it was Yoshitoku. They have a really nice gold foil print on the top and the bottom, and then they have painted in the side because they can't print there. Now they use a gold foil paint on the fan, but why couldn't they use it on the kimono? It's just such a shame. And that's it. That's all the paint. That's all there is to talk about. Thanks for you. I appreciate it on my 300,000 yen figure. Moving on to modeling, everything is very blobby and the fitment is also extremely poor. Starting with her wings, we do see a lot of detail in the top smaller feathers, but some of them look like they got like chunks taken out of them, and I'm not really sure why that is and it looks kind of weird. As we get down towards the larger feathers, we start to lose that detail and it looks like they just took a feather and then blew it up. And with a figure of this size and price, they should have added more detail. Funny enough, the place where they added more detail into the feathers was on the inside, which you don't really see, so that doesn't really make any sense. Moving on to the hair piece, also very underwhelming. There's just not really a lot of definition. It looks like they took a 1-6 scale hair piece and just kind of blew it up. There's no detail in the strands of the hair and everything again looks very blobby, even the little rope that's tying up her hair into a ponytail. I don't really see very many seams other than where her bangs are, but overall there's just not a lot of definition. We do start to see more detail in the Kamikazari. We can see all of the petals of the flowers. And as we move down to the tassels, they've added ridges to actually make it look like tassels. So I do appreciate that. Moving to the face, I do think that everything is modeled nicely. We have her little pointy nose and the lips are well-defined and they've even started to model the inside of her mouth. I think it just starts to get a little wonky when it comes to artistry, but we'll talk about that later. 
One of the more detailed pieces is actually her hands. They're very skeletal-like, which gives her that ghoulish appearance that she's known for. The fan, while the wood is a little blocky, does have ridges added in where it would fold, and so that does look realistic. And lastly, for her socks, we do see the appropriate folds and ridges. The worst part about this figure, which we've already talked about, is the fitment. It's very hard to get all these pieces to fit together, and they leave gaps. There's a particularly bad one on the back of her neck, which thankfully you can't see from the front in the pose that you'll display her in, but it's still very frustrating trying to get these pieces to fit together. And that's pretty much it. Effectively, it feels like, besides the hands, that they just took a 1-6 scale and blew it up. Moving on to artistry, this is going to be again another weak point for many people for this figure. In the anime, Albedo is a very silly and derpy character, but there are still many people that feel like that this face just doesn't look like her. And from looking at the prototype photos, I would agree. At first, I didn't like her from whatever angle that they were shooting. But now in person, I would say that I do like her more, although it is a little bit off. They went for more of a model-esque look like East Dream, which I don't mind, but you're going to be in either one of two camps. You're either going to like it or you're not. And I'm of the camp that I think that the duck lips look too silly versus sexy, and I really think that it would have just taken a red or a black lipstick to make her look sexy. The pose is where this figure really excels. It took metal supports, but I appreciate that they have one wing going up and one wing going down because it creates a lot of movement. And then they've twisted her body with the wings to show off her kimono, giving her a bishoujo appearance, and also show off her wings. I again just wish they would have added that lipstick to really elevate her to that next level. The elephant in the room for these figures is always value. Now, if you've been following our channel, you already know our stance, but we like to be inclusive of new members in our audience. But this time I'm going to make Senpai explain it. Most 1-4 scale figures are bunnies. And here we actually have Albedo's 1-4 scale bunny by freeing. It looks a little different because she's laying down here versus standing up, but some of the important things to note is that it does include her wings, and her bunny suit is actually cast offable. So there's a lot of tooling that goes into creating the figure that you see here, and it has an MSRP of 39,600 yen, albeit it is mass produced. And beside me, we have a real Yoshitoku Oyama doll that this series is based from. I bought this in January 2024 at full MSRP for also 39,600 yen. But this is made to order. The important things to note here is that we're seeing the same fabrics and techniques used. In her white sleeve, we see the exact same print work and painted outlining that we see in Albedo. She also has an embroidered obi, albeit it doesn't look as complex as Albedo's because Albedo's is shaped into a rose. But the entirety of the red kimono you see here is fully embroidered fabric, which is more complex than anything we see over here in Albedo. But that 39,600 yen encompasses the entirety of the doll. So the doll itself, accessories, a better base, which is made out of a particle board, plus a veneer finish. We have a wooden sign versus the cheap plastic base with Albedo and the cheap plastic sign. So we see a full, one four scale bunny here that requires a lot of tooling, albeit mass produced, but at 39,600 yen, which I'll just say is 40,000 yen. And we have a legit Yoshitoku Oyama doll that has a more complex kimono than what we see over here. And the entirety of the doll costs 39,600 yen, which I'll also just say is 40,000 yen. And together, if we combine them, we kind of have a perceived value of 80,000 yen, which is what we might expect to see Albedo price for with the collaboration. But that's not a fully fair comparison, right? Her wings here are absolutely enormous, so let's go ahead and give them some attention. You can see that size, that's not just a perspective thing. There's my hands, they're literally that big. And as we stated, these two wings almost weigh three pounds. The full one four scale bunny figure weighs four and a half pounds, so it's literally two thirds of her weight. So why don't we be generous, and if we're trying to give a value to these two wings, why don't we just say that they're worth as much as this entire figure? So we'll give it another 40,000 yen price point. So now with the Oyama doll, the actual one fourth bunny, and another set of wings, we're looking at about 120,000 yen of perceived value. 
but I'll bet it'll cost almost 300,000 yen, which is absolutely insane. And this is the reason why that we assert that Furuyu is just arbitrarily pricing these in that category to make these have a certain perceived value and kind of the ultimate Halo level product. This is why, until they fix the price point of these, these collaborations will always receive a one on our score for value objectively and subjectively. We just cannot see 300,000 yen when at best being generous, we're only giving it a value of 120,000 yen. And if you don't believe me that these are arbitrarily hyped up, remember we caught this on sale 30% off. So three months later, they're able to slash 89,100 yen off the price. And if she doesn't sell, presumably they're going to continue the next step of being on sale. That 30% that they just kind of got rid of, just complete profit erased. And that's what we mean by these are arbitrarily marked up. Again, we assert that it's just a market position that Furuyu is trying to do and trying to create. It's a new tier of product. Now, if you think we're being extra critical of this Albedo here, it's because we can give you another very important perspective of Albedo within the collaboration series. If you haven't seen our review of Pecora here, I highly recommend you check it out. Here's a quick summary though. Pecora, although she's part of the Yoshitoku collab series under Furiyu, is done by Design Coco versus Fnex. Pecora here has the best one four scale paint job of any one fourth we own or have ever seen in comparison to Albedo's, which is at best comparable to that freeing one fourth I just showed you. When it comes to modeling, the Pecora is top notch. And when we come back to Albedo, we're basically getting freeing quality. When it comes to the Komodos themselves, moving aside your opinion of the aesthetics, we see greater technique and execution in Pecora. We see more outline work, and in Pecora's case, it's gold. And the resolution of the print is much higher. Material-wise, we also get more material with Pecora because she has two kimonos just like Albedo, but the bottom one is a full-fledged kimono versus the bottom of Albedo is just like a half-size one. In terms of the obi, I think Albedo ones up Pecora here because that rose is beautiful. With Pecora, we just get a bow, but we also get the very cute Donchan scarf. So when you kind of combine that together, it's kind of a wash between the rose versus the obi plus Donchan. Then lastly, both of these characters are from major IPs. So if we're talking about like licensing agreements or anything like that, it's close to a wash. Hollow Live is very expensive. So too is Albedo, right? They're two extremely popular characters. So objectively, looking at these two, Pecora is better in almost every single way. And functionally, the only difference between these two are Albedo's wings. When looking at price, Pecora is 198,000 yen, and Albedo is 297,000 yen. So effectively, you're paying 99,000 yen more for two wings. And that surmises my problem with Albedo's price. As much as I like this and paid for it, the price is insane. So seeing 89,100 yen slashed off the top of this definitely puts her at a much better price point than the retail, right? It's still 207,000 yen, which is, you know, more than Pecora, but, you know, we get a lot more with Albedo. I would see this being priced more along the lines of maybe 230,000 yen, at most 240,000 yen if we give the wings a 40,000 yen value. We have a love-hate relationship with these. I'm the one buying them. I love them. I hate the price. So I can't sit here and act like it's worth the price tags that we see because it's not. I've been collecting for almost 12 years now, and these are my favorite in the collection. This collab series is stunning, but it's not worth the price. So what I want you again to take away from all this more than anything is that if you want this series, just know what you're paying for and just make sure you're comfortable paying that price, whatever it is that you decide on. And with that, back to Kohai. Let's give her a score. 
Starting with the box, it's as horrible as Kurumi is. They didn't ship it in another layer of packaging, and it's literally just a plain black box. So it gets a 1 out of 5. Moving on to production, starting with paint. As for Alberto herself, I can't find any paint flaws, but she only has shading on her kamikazari and wings. If we factor in the kimono, while the print job is very pretty, they didn't use any of the paint to outline the flowers, and it's a low-res image, so it gets an average score of 8 out of 15. For modeling, as for Alberto's sculpt, it looks like they just took a 1-6 scale and blew it up. The only details are in her hands and her kamikazari. For her wings, while the small feathers can be very detailed, they start to get much less detailed as they get larger, and they've added a bunch of pieces back in, which makes it look sloppy. And on top of that, her fitment is poor all around. If we factor in the fitment and execution of her kimono, as usual, it's perfect, so I'm going to give it an 8 out of 15. Moving on to the base, as usual, it's horrible. They didn't learn anything. It's only slightly better than nothing because you have the additional placard, and I do appreciate that the supports fit into the base rather than sitting on top, but it still gets a 2 out of 10. Moving on to artistry under art versus model, it's definitely Albedo. It's a very elegant depiction of her and is a very beautiful figure. I love the color palettes they chose and the design choices, but the face detracts from the visual appeal for me, so it gets a 7 out of 10. As for the pose, it's extremely striking. It's what really gives the ambiance of this figure. It creates a lot of movement, and it shows off not only Albedo in her kimono, but also her wings. It's what really contributes to her grand presence, so it gets a 10 out of 10. As for the face, Albedo is supposed to be a very silly and derpy character, but this face is just too derpy for me with her duck lips, and you're either going to like it or you're not, so it gets a 5 out of 10. As for Moe, she's a complete bishoujo. She's absolutely gorgeous. Again, only minorly taking off for the face, so I'm going to give her a 9 out of 10. Moving on to value, you know our stance on these dolls. Both objectively and subjectively, they get a 1 out of 5. For playability and displayability, a de Tolf is 17 by 14 inches, but Albedo is 18 by 15 inches, which means she does not fit inside one, and she also extends over the sides of the top, making it very difficult for many collectors to not only display her, but also protect her. But if you do manage to find a way to display her, then she does have a museum-like quality, which is why she's going to get a 2 out of 5. This brings the total for the Albedo Japanese doll to a 54 out of 100. Of the three Yoshitoku dolls that we reviewed, Albedo is our lowest scoring one, but it makes sense when you consider her 300,000 yen price tag and that you're effectively paying 100,000 yen for wings, which don't get me wrong, I like the wings, I just don't think they're worth 100,000 yen, maybe 30,000 yen tops. Please keep in mind that on our scale, a 50 is average, it's not academia. So even though her score seems low, it just means that she's an average figure in pretty much everything except her presence. To a normal person, we have no doubt that if they saw these three dolls lined up next to each other that they would automatically gravitate towards the Albedo just because her presence is so captivating. But if they had a discerning eye like we do, they would notice that Pecora is pretty much better in every single way. She has the best paint on a 1-4 scale figure that we own. They're shading on pretty much every single element. She has the very cute Donchan. Her base is a little bit better because it's glossy and it has her cute signature. Her kimono is just much more sharp and vibrant, and she also doesn't have any of the fitment issues that Albedo has. In comparison to Kurumi's kimono, we can already see that the print is a lot sharper, and they use the gold paint to outline pretty much everything, which really makes it pop, and it's just a lot more vibrant. So in comparison to these two, I think you can see why the low-resolution spider lilies just don't stack up. Average score aside, we're still ecstatic that we have this doll in our collection, and unfortunately they keep making ones that we like, such as the Miku, the Sonico, the Monica, the Homura, and the Shinobu. We plan on growing this collection, but we will not support MSRP, so hopefully we can find them on sale so we can continue these reviews for you guys. Well, that's it for today's video. If you like this kind of content, please subscribe. You can find a way of supporting the channel in the description below. Please look forward to our next video on Natives Maple and Cinnamon from Nekopara. Well, until next time, senpai, bye!